here we are about to embark on another adventure. Tori and I have swindled, I mean, asked nicely and uh, to our relatives if they would take care of Wesley and they said they did so we can embark on an interesting adventure. We are going to see Kai Barone. Pretty nice face. Yeah. Owner of Lure of the North and Jordan Jonas. Yeah. Jordan has yet to beat a Wolverine to death. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Lame TV, man. <laughs> the winner of season six of Alone is actually teaching a survival course. And um, they had a couple spots open and they asked us if we wanted to come out. And Tori and I are literally going to be sleeping in a primitive shelter that we build. And we're going to be living off the land for the next five days. Uh, through trapping, ice fishing, and harvesting whether winter wild edibles we can find. So it's like a loan, so we're only allowed to bring 10 items each and you have to choose out of a list and it's sort of recreating what a loan is like. Now, uh, we're here late. The group of people, there's a, I think I think seven people or something like that, they went in earlier. So me and Tori have just had some kind of loose instructions here in Northern Ontario and we're following some snowmobile trail and cutting over a valley across the mountains to the canyon of the crescent moon and um, hopefully we get there before dark and then sleep in a snow ditch and cut firewood for uh, for heat without dinner so that's basically the plan but we better start booting it because we've got 6k to go 6K? what do you think um, I'm excited. We kind of just randomly decided last minute to do this. We found a babysitter for Wesley and I don't think we had any time to really think about it and really process what all of this means or I didn't anyways and it's a 6k hike in there. I think on a snowmobile trail. We have minimal gear here because we're planning on sleeping in a shelter that we are building which I'm really excited about. Also nervous. Um, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a cool adventure. It's gonna be something different for me. Uh, although Jim has had experience doing something similar to this, I think on a loan. Not really. Haven't I proven myself enough? You know, but uh, I'm excited to check it out. And Tori said, oh, Jim's had a ton of experience doing this. I, honestly, I haven't really, like, I've slept out, I've gone cold tenting, hot tenting, but I don't think I've really slept out in a winter shelter more than once or twice in my entire life. So. Um, always always more to learn about this kind of thing and we have a beautiful day today too so hopefully the weather stays good but we better start going because we're gonna be showing up in the pitch darkness do we have our headlamps honey I do I don't have mine did you bring mine where did you put it I guess I forgot it you must have put it in a bag no something. no I didn't what do you mean you had it all out on the counter and then it wasn't on the I counter, didn't put it so anywhere I you put it somewhere. no I forgot my headlamp Tori did, did I forget my headlamp? If if I don't pack Jim's underwear, he wouldn't bring his underwear. If I didn't pack Jim's... If Jim's head wasn't attached to his body, he would forget that. So It's a miracle he's made it to the age 38 or however old he is, 39. This miracle. is what I have to deal with. It's very abusive, but uh, we're going to get over it. Okay, so we're starting to walk. Seriously though, where's my headlamp, honey? I don't know. Last I saw it, it was on the counter. In the I kitchen. thought you were packing things while I was getting ready. It was on the counter in the kitchen, and then it wasn't there anymore. So I assumed you put it in a bag. Aha! Uh -huh. You're such an asshole. I have it! Oh, that's only part of it. Are you scared? What are you walking like that? You're terrified. <laughs> this is fun. Don't look through the gaps, honey. Well, this one's rocking. It's a nice view over there, eh?
All right, coming in late in the evening. I think it's probably going to be pitch black by the time we get there. Uh, but really pretty. Seeing lots of animal tracks. Nice views. Crossed a train trestle, which was kind of cool. And I just came up to something that was a little bit interesting. Look at this. You see this track right here? It comes from up there. And we follow that track down to this. A natural snowball. Look at that. You ever seen anything like that? A little piece of snow fell off the top and rolled down into a cartwheel and just stopped there. Now you're wondering what those little black things are. Those are snow fleas. They're bugs. They like to, they seem to like depressions, footprints or whatever in the winter. Usually on uh, warmer winter days, late in the winter, they start to come out. Wow, it's so nice out here. Perfect evening. Hey, Tor. Hey, I think we're in the last stretch of our... Coming down the home stretch? I think so. We yeah. We're making pretty good time, I think. I think maybe a couple more clicks, eh? What time did we leave? I, I don't remember. Five? See some people moving. It's almost dark. And we are nearing the canvas tent. A dark figure emerges from it. Jordan Jonas, I presume. Yeah, yeah, it's good to meet you, man. Good to meet you too, man. Yeah, welcome. How are you doing, man? Yeah. Yeah. Glad you guys came. Yeah, me too. Hey, welcome. Nice to meet you. you. <laughs> Seems to be a pretty uh, fitting way to meet you for the first time, man. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. That was awesome. Very I'm glad much, you guys yeah. came out. Yeah. yeah. That was a little hike. It was awesome, yeah. So Hi. here is the group. Hi. Woohoo! That we oh have God. walked in to meet up with. Hi, I'm Kai. I'm awesome, yeah. So, Tori and I arrived here late in the evening, entered a hot tent with a beautiful bow bed and ate beaver stew with uh, several other intrepid adventurers. Kai gave us our rations, which is basically three small bags of food. That's all we're going to eat this week. Uh, and so we're basically going to try to subsist by hunting, trapping, and fishing. Or basically by fishing and trapping. Get food. Well, it seems she's already got a beaver, which is pretty impressive. And she told me to get these, to bring these over. I, I guess I'm going to learn what these are, but to be perfectly honest with you, I have no idea at this point. Oh, yeah. Hello, guy. 
he's little. He's actually the smallest beaver I've ever caught. Yeah, it's quite a small beaver. Yeah. It's not going to feed all of us. Aha! Uh -huh. What's it? So that's what that's for. What's that, what kind of trap is that? This is a Conobear 330. The famous Conobear trap. Yeah, and then we're gonna just, uh, we gotta rub it in snow, dry snow. And that helps wick away any of the moisture from the fur to protect the fur. This is also a trick for if you fall through the water. Uh, yourself. First thing you want to do is rub snow all over yourself and that will wick away most of the moisture and you could probably continue just walking. Yeah. So did you bait him with just a little bit of action or poplar? Poplar. Dinner for the week. Dinner. Oh, that's not gonna be very much food for everybody. Well, are you gonna share? Yeah, it's yours. Sweet. Yeah, I feel like I didn't do much in the production of this. Uh, I actually technique. was wondering if it was a muskrat when I was pulling it out. It's like not Small. much bigger than yeah. a muskrat. Yeah. But that means there's <laughs> more of them in there. Yeah. Jordan has yet family. to beat a wolverine to death. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Blame <Yeah>. TV, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, let's, I guess you did this set yesterday before we, we showed up. Yeah. yeah, so what we did was we poked around the hole or the lodge trying to find the weakest ice because that's where um, the weakest ice means there's the most activity. So there's more warmth keeping it open. Um, and the other thing that we were having uh, troubles with is finding deep enough water to set the traps. Um, and so these, this area here was the deepest and the weakest. So, so, so when that, that means that that's probably where their entrance is. Yeah, right? they're, they're coming in and out. We Stand didn't, uh, sometimes, it sometimes you, you, it's hard to find the entrance. So what we do is we bait the trap with the poplar and anything, uh, green since they've, they've been feeding under the ice for a while. Anything with that fresh smell, uh, is an attractant. So. Nice. As opposed to just a trap that automatically, like a, like a locking snare kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you, we could do a snare pull as well and yeah. we would also bait it with poplar. But, um, but okay, this one in okay. particular, I think was actually um, grabbing one of these from, it, from its bait pile. So this I didn't put there, it was underneath the uh -huh. ice. Um, and so I think it was trying to bring it back to the shelter to eat. Nice. Um, it just happened to... Yeah, Back. beaver Back. definitely not worth the money they used to be to pelt, but still yeah. awesome for food and awesome for making mitts and all kinds yeah. of stuff, right? Exactly. Can't believe it. Twelve bucks a pelt or yeah, something. Yeah, twelve dollars. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. And they're such nice pelts. Yeah, it's wild. A quick uh, look at Jordan's. What are they called, Jordan? They're just Siberian hunter skis. Some reindeer skis. Siberian hunter skis. They got the moose skin on the bottom. Only the shin skin is good. Because the shin skin's longer wearing. Whatever we don't use And that keeps you, you can go uphill, no problem. If you flip these around like this, stick your foot in, you can go downhill. And uh have some rations. What kind of wood? Willow wood. You can use spruce, you can use anything without any knots. That's yeah. flexible and strong. You know? Yeah, cool. that's awesome, man. How do you like them for just getting around here? Oh, I love them. Though. Yeah. Like, when I first yeah. put them on, it was like the whole forest opened up to me. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> it was pretty exciting. Nice. I bet. First time I wore them. Yeah, I can't say I've ever seen anything like them. It's super, super kind of jealous, a little. And, <laughs> I yeah, know a Russian yeah. guy that's a master. Yeah, that neat, man. Right on, man. There. Thanks for showing me. You probably, uh, you probably love running around on them like in those tundra and stuff yeah because yeah because you can kind of run on them you know? yeah totally yeah, yeah. yeah. Pull your cool load.
felt most limit. No, I slimmed it. We're looking for just boughs and then the log. I can get up there and back and see what's going on over there. Okay. Okay, so uh, right now, we are all kind of uh, joining together to make uh, a large group shelter. So me and Tori are gonna start uh, helping out with that. And then we're going to sort of branch off and build our own sort of shelter uh, for the two of us and uh, kind of uh, let everybody else put more time into that. And so right now we're cutting, uh, cutting some trees. We need the boughs and we need the actual logs too. And uh, what we're doing is um, we're not just going anywhere and cutting a perfect tree standing in, you know, in, in the middle of a field or alone on a cliff. We're trying to take trees from um, where it's not going to deplete the forest. Um, so what we're doing now is we're going to take a spruce tree that's growing directly beside a spruce, spruce tree that's growing directly beside a pine. So it's a way that you can harvest uh, some wood and uh, uh, actually um, uh, help the forest a little more long-term as opposed to just laying waste to whatever looks the most perfect for your, your immediate needs. So no shortage of work to do today. I'm already feeling hungry. We only have a small amount of rations to eat while we're out here. So yeah, lots of fun. Nice work, Tor. Beast mode. I was just gonna ask you to hold this. One. Sure. I'll hold it. All right, you got it. Okay. All right. Nice. That's a good shot. The two legends. You are right. Jordan. Yeah. Did I try using your app? Yeah. Okay, so guess what I get to use? Jordan, the Jordan, uh, just lent me his hatchet. It's in a, a Vanky Siberian style. Serioga. <laughs> <laughs> Handmade. It's got those notches on the back from Alone. Season six, right, Jordan? Six? Gone, yes. From uh, Alone season six, he's got all these notches from his kills and things that he harvested while he's out there. <coughs> Moose, Wolverine. And I thought that is pretty cool. So I'm gonna use it to limb this tree and I'm gonna feel pretty cool about it as I do it as well. This is fun, eh Kai? I think I, that's where I, I think I 
think I was right. Maybe twice cut once. There. You come back this way. I just come out of the side. Oh, boom. Yeah. Like that was like a good No, but oh. see, pass the pass there. Right, no, that's not a good Sure. Okay, that'll be it for the door. Yeah, I think everything. I like what you did there with the using snare wire. I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure if I would have thought of that. Given enough time, you would have. Yeah. So I'll get a long piece for the door now. Then we can start. To show How's that going, Tori? Pretty good. Yeah. Done. They could use that log. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Tori and I started helping the group. They got Jordan showing some tips and sort of spearheading that. And it looks like they're gonna have a really awesome lean to with a fireplace in it. And uh, me and Tori are gonna build basically, I think a, what, what you would call double lean to shelter. And we found a good spot. Now the, the shore here is really steep coming into the swamp that we're on. So we're more or less gonna have to, uh, we're gonna get close to shore, but we're gonna have to sleep on top of pretty much frozen mud and frozen water. So, and so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this tree that you see right behind me here, another one on shore. We're gonna run a log on either side of that, of that tree tied off. That's gonna be our ridge pole. And the slit between those two logs is gonna be where our smoke escapes. We're gonna use a bow bed and uh, we're gonna lie logs on either side to make sort of a, you know, an A-frame kind of idea to a double lean-to, close it off as much as we can and uh, hopefully have um, something that's gonna keep the, uh, the wind out and keep the heat in pretty well too. So we wanna build a shelter with a fire in it, so we're gonna have to use a big kind of flat rock um, so our fire doesn't melt too deep into the ice and get all soupy and stuff like that. That way we'll kind of both be able to sleep on either side of the fire. All right, sweet. Yeah, yeah. so what do you think? Does that, does that pass the Jordan? Oh, no, yeah, no, I, I'm learning. Yeah. Yeah, okay, all right, right. Yeah. no wrong way to do it. Right, just as long as you don't freeze. If you freeze, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What do you want to do next? So we need another. Yeah, it should be alright. Yeah, that's fine. So like this high? Sorry. So I'm gonna do a jam knot. And you can get it real tight. Like that. It's a cinch. Yeah. All right. So now we we need another one. So this so this is about the length. So I can yeah. start cutting. Yeah. They don't need to be nearly that wide either, right? Think this one's long enough, Tor? Uh, if it doesn't break off when, you, when it falls, yeah. I'll take it nice and low. Axe is pretty tall, eh? Yes. 
Yeah, it's nice to have a, a nice sharp axe if you're actually uh, chopping wood instead of sawing it. Sharp axe, big, big difference. Limbing, obviously sharp axe is great. Or if you're trying to do anything, uh, just taking boughs off, of course, any actual, <coughs> any actual like bushcraft projects, like making a paddle, sharp axe is great. But if you're using an axe to split, it's probably best to have it pretty dull. Uh, you don't really need a, a sharp axe to split. Mauls aren't sharp at all. And uh, so this axe is, is fairly dull, but it's gonna be great for splitting wood because we're gonna get some good amount of firewood laid in tonight and have a nice warm sleep. All right, let me, let me get in there. This looks very awful. Don't break it because I don't want it to. Okay. Ooh, it's We've got plenty of room here. We're going to try to do this one a little higher. You can probably go down further. <sighs> I mean, then it would be blocking the wind, but it's still going to block the wind from the wood. The, I think they're probably going to be smoky now, right? There, there's shelter, that's my only concern with it. <sighs> the other way again. The door is so nice. Like, if there's any way over the hundred of Jim and Ted. <sighs> the reason these logs aren't level is so the smoke will actually escape more easily because it'll hit the roof and then go out that way, but it'll also block the wind. The wind's gonna be coming from this way, so it'll help block the wind more too. All right, so let's work on a rock next, I guess. I think, uh, yeah, we can get a rock there for sure. Tori's just digging out a little spot for the fire. Me and Tori are going to just try this gigantic rock to put our fire on top of. We think it might be a little ambitious. It might wind up in a failure, but we're going to give her a go. So we fall this side. Yeah. Move your leg. So that it can just okay. Move. Ready? One, two. One more. One. Hell yeah. That is a fire rock. time we have four nights uh. Uh. <laughs> Manda you broke my tow line oh I thought that might happen I found this like rotting in the side of a river in, in northern Ontario a few years back so well maybe you can sew it together when we get home oh that's heavy that's yeah, you think I was faking it? No. Not anymore. Just kidding. I was trying my hardest. Oh, 
Holy son of a bee sting. This looks like have a fairly big fire on it. Let's each grab a rope. Uh, grab that one. I'll make a little easier. Now we're going to get a ton more sticks like this and lean them on either side. Yeah. Me and Tori cheated a little because uh, our sled was not one of our 10 items. We were obviously allowed to use it to get into the spot. So we took a little bit of liberty there and man, it was helpful. And hauling that gigantic flat rock, that's for sure. Let's go see how their shelter's going. We're working on the chimney right now. We got a little draft into the fire going through a rock tunnel here, feeding the fire. For when we do have it sealed up, it'll have air flow. Then you got your little, take the tour. <laughs> I can feel it's holding the heat pretty well too. It isn't is. It? Yeah. It's very nice actually. Yeah. The smoke's also going out, which I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with too. So I was a little concerned. It might, I mean, I'm sure it might get smoky the odd time in here, but if it gets smoky, but you, we can pull this flat, cut it here, pull this flap down, so it's yeah. like this. Right. And then you can sew from there another oh, flap see. right there and hang. Yeah, like, and that funnels it out. If you roll a log in it and hang it here, it'll hold it down, you know, and yeah. make yourself yeah. a little hood bag. Where do we? So I've somehow managed to get a pretty pretty decent recruit here helping me out. Got uh, Jordan laying in some boughs, some balsam. 
And our shelter, slowly but surely, is coming along. Gotta be nice. Usually when you say low, right? Yeah, if it's nothing else. You. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I remember the first few like shelter missions in that I did. You, you know, you read about okay, a few tips in a book or a magazine, but then you get out there and you do it, it and like the ground's all, catching yeah. on fire. You're like dumping all your <laughs> drinking water everywhere in the middle of the night just for it to catch again a couple minutes. Yeah, later. it's not the same at all. Yeah, they don't really. In those books they don't really talk about like smoke very well. Specifics, <laughs> right? Don't em emphasize yeah. it, but it's like. Yeah, look at this dude. Just a laser. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. Good. Those guys all ride them. Super cool. Yeah. So I think this side I'm gonna do uh, tarp on this side. Yeah. And then that way. side maybe I'll just throw bows on top of it. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jordan, one of the things that's interesting with him is he had, has a lot of northern experience, but also uh, northern experience that's not North American, as you can tell by his skis and uh, also a few other tips he had for uh, building shelters. Instead of cutting boughs and piling on, on them on top, they'll just cut full trees and kind of lay them or make a teepee out of full trees with the branches on, which is uh, one thing he pointed out that the Ivanki do, who you spend a lot of time with. Molly. <laughs> 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 Yeah. That's why we're all here is to learn and share and all that kind of stuff. So he's giving me a hand. Wow. That's great. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's good, huh? Come on, I don't know if these ones are any good. What's that? I don't know if these ones are any good. Oh, no, no, it all adds up. <laughs> so I guess so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, coming along. Definitely the uh, yeah. larger group there has uh, surpassed us quite quickly in their shelter completion project. Uh, but we still have some time. What do you think, Kai? It's starting to come along. Yeah. It's gonna be like, you know, if the wind starts coming in there. I mean, the smoke might blow right through. Uh -huh. So it kind of gets in and like, so it's just like, go. Okay. Yeah. 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 If there's no wind, it'll go kind of straight up. That's the idea. Anyway. Part, like strips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have it. Like, it just makes it just so. Have you done that? Yeah, I have. Oh, no. That's awesome. Why moss is it soak up, but it's just to hold down whatever kind of. Maybe you come to this side because it might be too short. Yeah. Which I wouldn't have. But, you, but the Greenland dogs are pretty cool. You need help? What's that? Oh, thank you. What's what specific? Tell me more. What specific? So I'm going to show you how to tie a jam knot. So I just tie overhand knot and the end of this. Great little knot to to use when you're lashing, um, and when you're trying to tie, for example, the structure of the shelter together. I'm just going to back up the line a little bit. <clears throat> just tie another simple knot in. Super easy. The other end is going to go through here. So, so I've threaded the end through the second knot. Okay. And then as I pull, this knot tightens up until it hits that there. And then I can pull it really tight and it won't loosen off or slide through. 
So a really secure knot, <clears throat> not, definitely not an easy one to get undone. But I mean, really, it's probably all I need when you're using five 50 pound test parachute cord. Really good knot to know how to use because you can really uh, limit the amount of cordage you use. You just follow it up with a, a half hitch there just to make sure it doesn't slip. I'll put one more into. As you can see, super secure knot. Uh, now we are gonna go skin the beaver that uh, the rest of the group trapped early this morning and that's gonna be our dinner. So uh, we're doing it out here. So far I'm starting to feel a little weaker, but uh, I've, we do have some rations. And uh, once we get the shelters done, tomorrow's gonna be all about getting food. So anyways, let's go skin this beaver. Yeah, yeah that's okay. smart. Okay, so the first thing that we always do is give thanks yes. for anything that has given its life yes, absolutely. to us uh, to make our lives longer um, and uh, yeah I think any anything that feeds us uh, deserves many thanks there's lots of different traditions tobacco and the mouth and sage one of the four mm -hmm. sacred um, medicines um, but for me it's just taking a moment and giving thanks Thank you. Okay. And uh, there's two things that dull a knife really quickly, fur and bones. Okay. So I usually use just like one of my more knives to remove the feet and the tail. And then this is my skinning knife, better. Um, Cause right now, so the only thing that's holding it is the skin. So it's not gonna dull it as much. Mm. The ravens know. <laughs> they really yeah. do, though. <laughs> Quite literally. Yeah. So these are these are edible. They're high in protein. Um, so this will be good for someone's pot. Do you eat the tail cut? Yeah, you can. I've heard of people just basically throwing it in the fire uh, and then that sort of charcoals either side of it and then you just peel off the skin and eat it. I have tried it and it just tastes like tenon. Like, honestly, don't like it. What I think people are eating when they say beaver tail is the muscle here oh. that is the tail because yeah. that is like eating bacon. Oh. It's like all fat here. Um, oh. And so that is like super gristly and really good. Um, yeah, this young beaver, though, you might have better luck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, tail. I may have tr tried like an old, older, <laughs> an old stinky beaver. An old stinky beaver. I just have a uh, use like a drywall tool to uh, a drywall cutter to lift to, the skin and, and it to cut all the way up. Um, yeah. So what we're gonna do? Uh, this is the anus, and then there's two scent glands. Every whether you're a female or a male have them. They're called casters. Um, you don't want to puncture them because that will ruin the meat. It won't ruin it, it'll just make it really um, fragrant. And they probably feel like a, like a kamek or a mukluk yeah. too, because yeah. they move. Yeah, the thing I like about them most is that um, you don't have to change your binding. You can't push this one away. Mm -hmm. There's so much fat on right, it. Right, right. It's like, it oh, you is, sort of it, can. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ravens kind of will try to yeah. talk to them too when they're out hunting. Oh, yeah. You have to pay attention to birds. They can tell you where. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of times they'll fly above bears. Yeah, yeah. Alert, alert and stuff. But it's pretty well documented that wolves and ravens work together, though. Totally, I'll let you guys butcher it. Put the scent glands in there, the gobble, and everything. Mm, yeah. <laughs> the good news is, if we make it really taste awful, they won't want any. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this. I won't eat any of this. You guys Boy, have it all. This is all you guys. <laughs> all you guys. Sweet. We got our own little rations over there. Look at this way now. Just take the hide. There we go. We got away with the hide clean. Yeah. Good job, teamwork. Nice work, huh? <laughs> Jordan. Wow. It's a pretty nice space. Yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, good job. Feller on here. Um, how do you? Uh... 
So Kai is just uh, scraping the beaver hide. Oh, look at Yum. that. A bunch of delicious chunks for the pot. Yeah. This is all fat up here. I've got my Canadian apron on. Um, so I've got to be really careful to just get the flesh and any of the fat off. So you're kind of just... So you're not tearing it, right? Yeah. You're kind of just going on a little bit of an angle. I'm using my body weight to kind of pinch it so that it goes a bit taut. But yeah, you can get a hole in it pretty easily. It's gonna be... <laughs> well, I think I'm going to get my pot and throw that in there. Yeah, you should. Yeah. So we just got uh, the beaver uh, skinned. I took a leg off of it and showed the rest of the group. I wanted to kind of give it to them because they're here to learn too. And it's something I have a lot more experience with. So I did a little cut and just kind of showed them that. And uh, they're going to get it all ready for the pot. And Tori and I are going to continue building our shelter. Here. Okay. So I tied this log on to create a gap right there. And that gap is going to basically be basically pinching the logs we use to build a wall at the end of this A-frame, which is more of a, a double lean-to because there's a hole in the middle. Like, I guess we could hew these with the axe and make them all, you know? Right now? Yeah. I think we need some balsam stuff. Balsam has these little blisters on it. And so if you just kind of cut these blisters, there's this fluid. So I'm just going around and cutting them and getting that 
that sap and those little sap balls. Just getting that out and I'm just wiping it on this piece of birch bark here. And uh, no lighters allowed on this stint, so we're gonna have to light a ferro rod fire. Now, if you ask me about the best thing you can use is balsam fir sap. And now Tori's gone into the shelter and she scraped up a bunch of birch bark with a knife into a really almost fine powder. And while she was doing that, we teamed up and I went and harvested some balsam sap. And then she's gonna kind of coat those scrapings in the balsam sap and then light it with the ferro rod and then put the kindling on top and it should work to get a fire going. But um, yeah, it can be tough with a ferro rod sometimes, but if you have some of this uh, great natural fire starter, it's a lot easier. Hey? Yeah, where you at? Right here. The back edge. Oh yeah. Run in the kind of canoe I have? Of course, yeah. yeah. So I'll go, I'll just portage the beach. Oh, yeah. yeah. No problem. No. But you can get sure. like intentional. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fire. Start a fire with. That's well done. Yeah. How's the smoke? That's what we're kind of trying to figure out. So far, so good, though. Oh, yeah, it's going right yeah. up. Yeah. That's the one advantage. But you're not going to get that ventilation. Yeah, just good. as long as that gap's open. Yeah. I'm good. A good fire starter, of course, We'll need yeah. some more boughs. It's a, little, a little open on this side. I think it's a good shelter though. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's good. Uh, pretty much done. We put that log wall in just to block the wind and keep it a little more contained, warmer. But because we could only have a tarp covering one side, uh, we just put boughs on the other side and we're gonna need a lot more boughs on the outside and on the inside to sleep on. So other than just collecting a few more boughs, um, we're done with the shelter, uh, but I'm feeling hungry and I only got three bags i got some pemmican some beef jerky and some trail mix and i just finished my trail mix and i've been dipping into the beef jerky and it's day one so that's getting me a little concerned i'm feeling already like kind of a little hangry so hopefully we don't uh i don't end up snapping on anyone out here like i did on my brother ted on alone you can put it there if you want it's just the tide's gonna come up man just just let me do this, dude. You're just like, do this, do that. Uh, you know, I've eaten some of my rations today to put, put time into making a good shelter because it's winter. And then tomorrow we're going to go um, after some more fish. We're going to try to snare some rabbits, maybe do some ice fishing. Uh, today we got uh, the beaver, which was exciting. So I'm going to eat a little bit of that for dinner, but there's not a lot to go around. So 
it's not going to be a ton of food, but uh, it'll fill me up a little bit, and then hopefully tomorrow we'll we'll get some more food. Should I just do? So for dinner tonight, we have um, stew made with the beaver that um, we trapped and Kai uh, cleaned today. So it's quite the experience and it's delicious. Well, it is the next morning. <sighs> Had a great sleep. Did wake up a few times in the night though to just kind of restoke the fire and uh, maneuver around. I probably could have had better bow placement underneath me. I think some of these boughs, I think, uh, of quite large branches on them, which I maybe could break off. So I'll tweak that for tonight. But yeah, I'd say first night, not bad. Tori, how did you do? Pretty good. My feet were cold for a little while at first, but I switched out my socks and I felt better. And from then I was nice and warm. Sweet. So yeah, <sighs> success, I would say overall.
it's not just like a straight square. Right. Yeah, I've mixed up the poplar a little bit just to make it a little bit pretty and yeah, you can smell it a lot nicer. Um, having the green, it's really nice to get like a really green one. Um, sometimes if it, if it doesn't actually have that literal green color, it's not quite like fragrant enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how heavy is that trap? Uh, I don't know. I haven't weighed it before. Well, oh. we got it. <laughs> This is uh, one of the things we were taught about a beaver lodge that sometimes there'll be a chimney and that's how you tell if there's an active family of beavers or if it's an active lodge because uh, if it's not an active lodge what's the point in setting around it? You're wasting your time. So uh, we were kind of taught that sometimes there's almost a little chimney in this case they're not there's not but there's a patch where there's no snow which shows that there's kind of heat coming out. For beavers, I'm not a beaver trap. Oh no, no, it's a general. Like if you're oh, general. For... So these are uh, jaws of life in regards to trapping. So they're they're cheaters, cheater helpers, uh, trap setters. You can do it with your own strength, but these are so much better, a lot safer. But these are the jaws, and the jaws are loose right now. Okay. This is the trigger. So the idea is that the beaver will swim through, investigate this. What I did here is this is a piece of poplar that I've scored, and you can see that green. That's like the under under Cambrian part of the um, bark, and it's uh, it's really fragrant. And the beavers have been feeding on this waterlogged. Uh, feed for the whole winter so even just this little bit of fresh scent uh, yeah. it can be an attractive to them so and then this is the dog this uh, silver trigger here and that is going to flip up when I squeeze the jaws together and land on here and it's just gonna that dog is gonna come up and hold like that and then when the beaver swings through it it rolls yeah and the dog comes off and so, uh, sets the trap. Yep. So before I, the last thing that I do when I put the, before I put the trap in the water, is I lift these springs. Oh, you do, eh? Right? At that point, okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and that's the safety gone. Okay. Yep. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach right now. now yeah. I'm gonna attach the trap to the pole, and then once I have the trap set, and it's gonna be standing up vertically like this. Oh. And then the last thing I'm going to do, my hands, so I'll have this like safety box. My hands are going to be away from the trap and all I do is lift oh, the springs. Like yeah. And then the trap is live and the only thing that you're doing now is is holding it out with a pole like okay. this. Okay. So even so if that goes better. off, yeah. you're out of that sort yeah. of the zone. Got it. Where's our rolling? Mm. Yeah. Um, ten. Okay. <laughs> but it was like fairly shallow, so but you want your springs to I guess it's a lot of trial and error or maybe a good Uh hopefully not too much error. <laughs> yeah. And meet you guys. He's a trapper? Yep, he's been trapping. Letting go. The last thing I do thumb off, move back. Let go. Yep. So now that looks great. Would you have? Would I want to? Would this be uh, the exact same kind of trap you put like in their in their path? Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Only you wouldn't need to bait it because okay. if you find the entrance. Yeah, but they just would try to swim through it and bump into it. Yeah. Does that hole to be right? Yeah, you want the whole spring to be. Uh, I 
I got that going. One last scoop. That's good enough. Yeah. Ship it. Very good. Super frozen in. There yeah. you go. And that's a good idea to put a vertical stake to mark your trap because if we got to dump of snow, it can be difficult oh, yeah, to find. Right. Except yeah. for the big house. Good. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know where the, uh, the house is, but. Yeah. 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 So hopefully this produces dinner um, because we don't have anything else for dinner. We had a beaver yesterday. Yeah. We have some left. Oh, you guys have, they have a little beaver left. I found a couple of dry old sumac berries. Um, so other than that, I might be eating pine needles. You got marrow tonight. Marrow. We got this marrow, which is a little suspect. I don't know. But it's probably been there since late November, you know? It looks kind of fresh, right? Mid-November. In a bad way? They say, are you like, put them in the cold, warm them up, put them in the cold, warm them up. Let's make your hands more resilient to cold. All right. You definitely need the whip. And then what we can do is get a horizontal. We should get a horizontal. We can Stick. use that big fatty yeah. um, and just wire it yeah, into it because then it won't uh, pull yeah. it under. That's the kind of thing you really got to watch someone do it at first, right? Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. So we got some uh, traps set. Yeah. I did almost all the work. It was exhausting. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, so we got kind of a, a lesson in how to set uh, beaver traps. And um, that was pretty cool actually. So hopefully that produces some meat. And we're gonna continue on and look for some more sign. We saw some moose sign that was old. Obviously we're not gonna be harvesting a moose out here, unfortunately. Um, and uh, we saw some uh, rabbit sign that was fresh, but it wasn't a run. So at this time of year, the snow's hard packed and the rabbits can kind of go anywhere. So that makes life a little more challenging um, to try to locate a, a common sort of runway, uh, run where you can, where you can snare them um, and uh, yeah so we saw a bunch of squirrel activity too so we might set some uh, some squirrel poles and try to snare some squirrels but we're gonna continue walking out around this kind of point and walk along the shore of a, of a lake and see if we can see any more rabbit sign maybe set some snares so yeah so the fun continues I'm feeling fairly hungry though and tired but uh, yeah, we're, we're, on, we're on rations of beef jerky, so yeah, oh, wow. could use some more food. Okay, well, it is the morning of our third day of survival. Tori, is it our third day out here? Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I guess the morning of our fourth day. So it is the morning of our fourth day out here, uh, counting the day we walked in and um, which I think should count because we did burn a lot of calories on the 6k trek and it is a beautiful day colder than yesterday for sure but sunnier uh, the stove's firmer more hard packs gonna make it easier for traveling and uh, the day started out pretty nice Tori and I are just getting some uh, food cooked up we got some water melting we're gonna make some sumac tea over the fire I found some sumac yesterday and uh, we're going to reheat some of the beaver stew and rice one of the rations we had was rice that Tori wisely picked and uh, yeah so beautiful day I saw a gorgeous pileated woodpecker this morning and it turns out that we got another small beaver in uh, one of the traps that we set around this beaver lodge which were camped right on and it just kind of made me realize um, you know with a couple good conibear uh, traps and maybe some snares if you could uh, uh, post up in kind of a big wetland like this a lot of the time um, uh, swamps will be in chains uh, because there'll be a creek and the beavers will dam it several times and there'll be several beaver lodges throughout uh, that stretch and uh, like really you could um, catch enough meat to survive out here if you have an ice chisel and, and uh, the right trapping stuff, no problem. Uh, Kai was saying that uh, you trappers have a quota, they have to make a quota and they said pretty much just on beaver and trapping in a couple weeks through here they had enough meat for the season and they don't for the year and they don't have to buy beef anymore which is amazing just off uh, eating beaver. So. 
that's pretty cool. Um, so I think on the agenda for today is going to be doing a little more fishing. We might, uh, we did see some porcupine sign. We might try to do some porcupine hunting and maybe set some snares uh, with the little reconnaissance we did and scouting and that, uh, you know, we didn't see much sign. And that's because the, the snow is very hard packed. Um, so the rabbits can kind of go anywhere and the squirrels too. Um, sort of uh, earlier on in the winter, they, they, when the snow is really fluffy, so earlier on in the winter when the snow's fluffy, they stick to specific trails. But now it's hard packed, they can go anywhere. So it's much more hit and miss uh, at this time of year to kind of figure out where the rabbit runs are. And uh, um, But we thought there's a chance we scout it. And so we don't know if we're going to put too much time into that. It definitely seems that um, beaver trapping is uh, what's uh, putting food on the table here. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to pop back in the shelter here and uh, we're going to drink some sumac tea and uh, eat a little bit of beaver stew and then get out and tackle the day. Okay. Water's really turned to like a red color. We hot. Lemony. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Cool. And the berries you can just chew that you, that you ingest, and they just add to the flavor. Nothing in the traps today. No, they do share and like the males get kicked out to go and find like a new home and build a new home to find a new wife. Mm. Um, makes sense for me. Yeah. Similar to, to humans. Do otters share burrows with them once in a while? They, beavers will share with muskrats. Uh, muskrats um, pay rent, cleaning the den. So they'll both live in there simultaneously at the same time. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. They clean it out of the sticks. They clean it out of the, the like, old sticks and like the feces and stuff. Huh. So there's a chance that we would catch a muskrat in these. Right now we are going on a porcupine hunt. We saw a ton of sign yesterday on a peninsula. So we're going to head up. We got a few people and we're going to spread out sort of from one side of the lake to the other side of the peninsula and just walk forward and keep our eye out and see if we can see the porcupine in a tree. 
and then uh, oh likely dispatch God. it with bow and arrow. So let's see how this works out. I got a satellite phone. So what are you doing right now, Kai? Just wrapping, making it a bit of a wider band for your foot so that it doesn't untwist. So once we get it sized properly, it will change the size. Sweet. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Crazy. To keep it up. <laughs> nice. With the tinglies, it, it bites in. Thank you, buddy. Moose. Moose. Yeah. <laughs> One of our ration choices is pemmican. Super high in energy. Dried blueberries, beaver fat, and beef jerky. But this is okay because this is actually like, you know. Here's Prince. No, maybe Fox. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not, definitely not porcupine. So this would be a good like, maybe spot to start here, you think? Um, no. They were collecting some chaga. So, so the idea is, guys, I don't know if any, if everybody knows this, but in case not, so we're we're on, we're on a point like this, right? Like that, and the water's here, and the water's here. The porcupine sign is like here, roughly. So we're gonna walk one, two, three, four, like that, and we're all gonna walk to the end of the point, like that, and we're all gonna see, to cover all that ground and see if we can see the porcupine. So keep your eyes peeled and looking up in the trees and that. And yeah. you know, we're not gonna be pushing it like with a deer, yeah. but we're gonna be, we're gonna be basically kind of the same thing as doing a drive and just covering all that ground and see if we can see it. So if you see it, high yeah. in the sky. And and we're going on the south side? Well, we're walking towards, so we got w water there, nice. water there. So we're basically following, spread out across the point, following to the tip of the point, which is that way. Yeah. Yeah. Just let me know where you want me on the line. Well, let's just take a try. I'll take center. <sighs> So true though, eh? <laughs> well, so we all kind of, so we all spread out shoulder to shoulder, decent distance apart and just kind of did a push looking for this porcupine up in the trees, following along a peninsula and uh, no luck, but I uh, saw a grouse and a squirrel and Jordan took a shot at them actually, but no, no luck there, so. Yeah, I think it was a good strategy though, for sure. I don't know if we just missed it, it was hiding. Who knows, but uh, yeah. Maybe we'll see it on the walk back, I don't know.
Yeah, I was I was planning on a controlled fall, but it wasn't too controlled. Couldn't have trusted those. Yeah. Any porcupine sign over there? What's that? Did you guys take your snowshoes off for this? Yeah, yeah. What's well, this? Just kidding. <laughs> Oh, with that attitude, I would. No, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh yeah, that was, that was nothing. Grace. Hey, that wasn't easy, guys. Mm. I bring. What's that? Are you really allowed to make stuff there? Maybe I won't leave out here. Yeah. Looks like we got another beaver. Okay, so today is technically day four. Um, we've been here. What am I saying? Okay, so t today is day four of our winter survival um, challenge, if you will, up at Lure of the North. Um, feeling pretty hungry today. I haven't eaten much today. Um, few nibbles of pemmican, a little bit of leftovers of rice from yesterday, and tea. That's pretty much it. And we did a huge hike today. We tried to flush out a porcupine, if that's what you call it, but we tried to find a porcupine. It was kind of cool. Um, and then we kind of tracked him, tracked him a little bit, found his little footprints in the snow. We weren't able to find him in the end, but that's okay. It was still a fun little adventure. So we're just back at the shelter now. It's starting to snow. Jim did some work um, collecting more boughs to try to snowproof it a little bit more on the one side. Um, we're also getting some more firewood. We just have one more night, so we shouldn't need much more. We did a big haul of firewood yesterday, but um, we just want to stock up just to make sure we don't get too cold. And so we're just going to do that and then I guess maybe crawl into the shelter and get a little warm for a little bit and then um, see what everyone else is doing. Maybe skin another beaver. So that's it. Explain that we got a beaver or something. Okay. That we trapped a beaver. Uh, so we did a big hike today and uh, we checked the traps, the beaver traps that we have set out. We have, I think, one, two, five traps out. Uh, for be beavers right now and uh, I hope you can see me. and we got one we got another one today we had one in the trap on Tuesday morning that one was eaten pretty quick so there's there was another one in the trap this morning so we're working on skinning that in a little bit and divvying up the meat um, and hopefully we'll get a little bit of beaver meat to eat later tonight to go with our rice and that should feed us pretty well, I think. It's really cool to see um, to, to see Kai and Jordan working together. Uh, Jordan's obviously um, really good at this. He won season six. He won season six of Alone. Kai's been uh, living, you know, this sort of lifestyle for a, a few years now, uh, trapping and hunting and um, guiding winter guiding trip, winter yeah. guiding winter trips and she's a badass herself so it's really cool to to see her out here doing it and um, 
maybe I can, I mean, I've learned a lot and maybe I can aspire to be like her one day. I don't know if I'm as tough, um, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> That's it. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. Check out Lure of the North. Kai is a badass. This isn't, this isn't my best work, so maybe don't. Yeah, Jordan's here. Show him. Do the big one. <laughs> Showing your wife off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm Do the big it. one. We heat, our, we heat our house with wood, so like Tori's always been pretty good, but then like she chopped like 20 face cords, you know? Yeah, oh yeah. And then she got really good. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Look at that accuracy. Dang. Exactly a quarter. Doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you've really performed there. That was awesome. Yeah, that's good. That's no uh, no knots in it. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? No knots in it too, eh? It's nice and dry. Nice, it's just split. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Hard Any moisture too. in it's probably frozen anyway. Mm -hmm. What a dream. Mm -hmm. Very satisfying. Split. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I borrow one of your toboggans? Yep. You want to get some water? Uh, yeah, maybe take this one, Kai's one, because it's the... Need any water? Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Does anybody want fishing? Uh, nobody's right now, but maybe yeah. I'll run down with the pole. And Might give it a go, too. Yeah. They also have a beaver, so maybe they don't feel like they need to. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, we might as well go load them in. Well, this will definitely give us enough for the night. Wow, I didn't realize we had so much already. Yeah. This is all better though. Yeah. And then we can just give the rest away to these guys. Yeah. You know? Still, you got to own that wood cutting scene. So, we're expecting, I think we're expecting from, from now until tomorrow morning about 10 centimeters of snow. So one thing to think about is not leaving 
your tools or really any of your stuff lying on the ground so it doesn't get completely buried in the snow. So hung up the saw and the axe and we'll just kind of organize our stuff so that it's all in one spot and it's not going to be buried um, before I get into the shelter and start a fire with this birch bark. I got a lot because uh, in the morning I usually need to restart it, sort of. I usually just lay some of this on the coals to kind of get a nice flame going, so. Do you uh, need an, a kindling or do you have enough in there? I probably need kindling, yeah. Huh? yeah okay. Some. Cool. There's a ton of kindling around here. There is. Kindling haven. Figured I'd bring the branches over. It's nice to have um, extra kindling too, again for the morning because the fire's burnt pretty, pretty down to like almost just ash by the morning, so dabby. <laughs> Boom. You lit off the coal? Yep. I go, I'd start cutting. This way? No, right. Okay, thanks. Yeah. How's that going, Jim? It's going good. We're just fleshing out this beaver, uh, getting the hide so um, we could stretch it, dry it out, and also, um, salvaging all this yummy meat that's still on the hide uh, so we can add that to the pot and stew it up maybe with a little bit of our ration some of our rice or something like that we don't have any rice left we don't have any rice left no oh, shucks well maybe just so we can uh drink oh, oh. i got some of getting too deep there did you maybe, cut it? No, I didn't. But uh, maybe just, just to drink the, the water if you stew this stuff up. But you got to be careful because this is a thin, uh, uh, a small beaver. So the thin is skin. The thin is skin. The, th the skin is thin. Blowing it. So Tori is fleshing out a beaver skin here. I don't know if I'm getting anything. You getting it? Yeah, it takes some getting used to. Yeah, definitely. Can I scrape it off? Yep. Yeah, you can scrape. There's a lot of meat on that skin. Yeah, maybe I'll scrape it off. Just scrape it like this. You guys left half the beaver on the skin, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You Joel's guys like, well, you left a little more yeah. meat than Kylan did. <laughs> hey, you did a good job. So Tori is fleshing out this beaver skin. It's her first time doing it, but you couldn't tell by the absolute professional, I don't know. I don't think I've got 
You look like you're getting the hang of it though. Yeah. Okay, well, I am here with the Jordan Jonas of Alone Season 6, the winner of Alone Season 6, and uh, we've just spent five days uh, camped out in a remote spot in northern Ontario, living out of a shelter and doing a little bit of a lone show survival workshop um, that's actually led by Lure of the North. And uh, Tori and I have to take off right now, so I stole a couple seconds just to talk with uh, Jordan and we're going to ask him some tough questions about his experience on Alone Season 6. Uh, so here we go. So uh, Jordan, what do you... What uh, advantages do you think you had uh, in the location you were in the Canadian oh, yeah. Arctic in comparison with, with your other experience um, being in northern areas? Yeah, no, I think it was, it was an advantage because when I got there in the back of my head, I didn't think, oh, this is going to be, has to be a starving contest. I thought, I know that I can live here right. if things pan out all right. So I... So I knew that I could apply like an active strategy and have a chance of yeah. of providing enough to get me through. So, was uh, the four, was there a similar like game and and, and, and yeah, pretty and similar like game. It was a little different than I expected. I expected maybe more bear. To, I, I thought bear would be my best chance and fish. And both of those I kind of struck out on. So yeah. then I. Uh, shifted to rabbits because that's what my place offered and and you know and moose which right on so, which you got good. Fun. Yeah. so jordan actually spent a lot of time living in siberia and uh, living and traveling with the banky which are nomadic reindeer herders right yeah, so yeah. that's definitely uh you know similar latitude too yeah yeah when I, it is because i had been at home for a while with the kids because i had a few little kids and hadn't been to siberia for a while so when the loan started i thought man you know, how's this going to go? But they once I got dropped off, it just like, oh, I'm right at home. You know, yeah. it felt really... Yeah, that was me and my brother. Uh, our plan was to not starve as well. <laughs> that was plan sort of A. And then, you know, we ended up with plan D. And by the end of it, we were pretty hungry. We'd lost a lot of weight. And I think... Uh, you know, Jordan had a you know an area where there were the calories uh, there to, to harvest, and he also managed to harvest them. So, pretty right. Impressive. So a big part of survival is just, I mean, it's just per hoping to provide opportunities for yourself. Because of course, you know, you might miss a shot, or you might not, it might not work out your way, but. You're just trying to increase the odds of having. He's also a really good, counter. so that really helps as well. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> no, yeah. It was, so what did, well. you, what did you think of your experience out there? Was it was it cool? Did, was it challenging? I mean, it was times? almost it was almost purely positive. I think I think when you watch the show, you might get the impression that it was a little yeah. rougher than it was. It was like uh, I had fun almost the whole time. I hate, I, but when you have enough food, you know. It, yeah. It's not too bad. Uh, yeah, the, you, uh, you don't feel so alone when you're yeah, well fed. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's so true. It's yeah. true. So I was actually, I enjoyed like having the camera. I knew I'd be able to share the experience with a bunch of people, which in the past in Siberia, I always I always knew I'd be doing all this crazy stuff, but as soon as I forgot it, it would be gone. So yeah. it was cool to have the opportunity to share it. And then, uh, and it was some of the funnest stuff. Oh, we caught a beaver. Oh, they got another oh. beaver. <laughs> Jim's going to eat that tonight. That is just like a never-ending uh, beaver uh, uh, beaver spot there. over yeah. there. That's great. So Jordan so and I are just having eating. this chat, and in the background right now, they just checked their beaver trap, and they got another one. So it looks like uh, the rest of the participants who are going to be here for a couple more days are going to be well-fed. Maybe Jim won't leave after all. Maybe yeah. I won't leave after all, yeah. <laughs> oh, they canceled yeah. the meeting I had, I guess. Yeah, right, right, yeah, no. yeah, faking that I'm just not starving. Well, Tori and I have to go pick up our son, so we ended up kind of coming last minute, so we didn't get to spend the last two days here. But, uh, it's yeah. It's been super fun, yeah. Yeah, Jordan's given us a few uh, 
good tips I've learned from him. I don't know if I've taught him anything, but you know, maybe. Yeah, it's that crazy balance in case they have a winter season. You know, we can't. Yeah. We we're siphoning. We got to keep other's. everything under our. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Secretly spying. On yeah, each yeah, other, giving yeah. each other bad information and stuff. Absolutely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what you want to do is just eat snow all day eat when you're sitting all day, there. When keep it's your minus head 30. in the water just to yeah. toughen your. Get your clothes yeah. wet. Yeah. Sweat a lot. Yeah. All yeah. The, yeah, all the so standard that would advice. be fun. Would you do a winter season? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'd have to. I would have to think about it. Yeah. 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 What about you yourself? Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Well, they got a big. Might have got a monster. Yeah. We'll hopefully meet up and do some cool stuff. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe with our brothers too, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah right? So. Watch that second episode of Alone the Beast. It's a good one. That's right, <laughs> My brother's yeah. on. I don't know if you checked that out, but that's pretty cool. Alone uh, the Beast. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully, uh, we'll be getting together with Jordan a little bit more. And fun Northern to see Ontario. some random, like, Avenki videos on my YouTube at Hobo Jordo. Yeah. And, like, Avenki stuff. You can right. follow that same name on Instagram. Yeah. Jordan, it's <laughs> awesome to have the chance it's to meet you, man. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, uh, thanks for uh, having a chat and all that oh, kind of yeah. stuff. we got to hang out some more, so stay tuned to old Jimbo's channel. And, Thank you. And, thanks. Uh, <laughs> cool. so yummy. It's going to be hard. Like. <laughs> yeah, <it's good>. so, <laughs> what do you think really that way? Yeah. I'll give you a high five too. Yes, all around. All around. Make the rounds again. There you go. <laughs> feeding, the, feeding the tribe. The provider strikes again. For some reason, my hands are freezing today. Yeah, mine too. It's like you bring a knife this big when you were camping and you're just like spreading peanut butter on the <laughs> 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 right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're spreading peanut butter on the table. Speaking of which, does everybody know the paracord wrap trick? Oh, yeah. I'll show it to you later. Yeah. 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 We can just ship them too if we don't end up getting yeah. them. Yeah. Right. Hey, Hank. Open water. What, what's that animal coming and drinking? Oh, uh, maybe, yeah, cool. Good eye. Some open water down there and some otter sign. We are on our way back. We said our goodbyes. Uh, the group caught uh, one more beaver, so they're gonna be well fed. 
and I had a little chat with Jordan there and said goodbye to the group and uh, took our tarp down and left our shelter as an area where it was a little warm, a little fire and uh, the rest of the group could skin that beaver. Me and Tori are doing the 6K hike out with no food. <laughs> so we're pretty hungry. Uh, so we think we're probably gonna whip through a drive-through once we get back to civilization. But uh, yeah, we actually got kind of lucky because uh, uh, Lure of the North uh, had a couple of people, actually Kai's dad and brother that are helping her out with another group uh, that is on a trek across to Mulgamy. They came in for the night on their way up to Goganda and uh, dragged our, our sledges back by snowmobile. So on the way back we're cheating, which is nice because we're thirsty and hungry. I feel my stomach is really sore. I'm really hungry, but we're not much further away. Not much further away. But I'm definitely feeling the hunger and the weakness. Thank goodness we didn't have to tow our sleds. But we're, uh, we've come up to a train trestle, the same one we came in. So we're, we're doing all right. Tori's scared to cross the train trestle. Scared, I'm just a little. Scared? Don't look through the cracks. I can't help it. If Girl. you look through the cracks, it's terrifying. Where else am I supposed to look? Look to where you're gonna step. See how much easier it is if you don't look through the cracks? Well, I'm not looking through the cracks. Looking if you look through the cracks, it's way more terrifying. I'm looking at where I'm going to step, but it's also dizzying. You're doing really good. It is a little dizzying. No rush, no rush. Oh, cool, look. Look at this raven's nest here, Tor. Come here. Wow, it's huge. Walk along the train trestle and I looked through the cracks and saw this raven's nest. It's huge. A little bit of a wildlife sign. Beautiful. All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> you did it, honey. Were you scared? It's just like, it's, uh, I'm not scared. Like, I'm not gonna, I know I'm not gonna fall. I'm just like, it's just like kind of trippy somehow. It is. You're watching it, the lines go underneath you, and they're a pretty big gap. I mean, I don't think my foot could fit through it lengthwise, but. It is a little dizzy. You could fall. It's dizzying, and you could fall, and, it, and it's a high, it's high, it's really high up. She's scared. Oh, scared might be a word. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Actually, it's better to, definitely good to proceed with caution along there. Like paralyzed. Right, yeah. Look, this guy turned around, he's terrified. Okay? Yeah. yeah. He did. Back at the truck. We did it. Oh, thank God, we were towing these. High five, honey. These are heavier than I remember. We're saved. Welcome to McDonald's. What can we get for you? 
Uh, yeah, can I get a uh, Big Mac combo with a Coke, a ketchup for the fries? Um, you want uh, try with that meal? Yes, please, sure. And uh, I'll also have a, uh, a medium coffee, two cream, one sugar. And, okay. and what size Chicken McNuggets? Do you have a 12 pack Chicken McNuggets? We have a 10. I'll take a, a 10 Chicken McNuggets with, uh, with sweet and sour sauce, please. Okay. I'm going to get a, a Mighty Angus. I'll get the uh, Mighty Angus combo. Combo. Yeah, the, uh, the combo, please. What, what do you want to drink? Is that the Mighty uh, Angus Free? What do you want to drink? Uh, it's Coke Zero. Uh, Coke Zero, just regular fries, fine. Yeah. yeah, and can we get a bottle of water as well? And uh, okay. also, you don't want a coffee? Do else? Oh, yeah. a coffee. Uh, I'll have a, a small black coffee as well. And um, and a bottle of water. Will there be anything else? Yeah, I'll take a uh, a crispy chicken ranch wrap. What? And an original uh, uh, hamburger. And two apple okay. pies. Will there be anything else? <laughs> two apple pies. And two apple pies. <gasps> Will there be anything else? This time, no. Okay. <laughs> and that will be forty-three ninety-nine. Oh my god! Thank you very much. <laughs> It's like we haven't eaten in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Two apple pies.